So, here we are again today. We're at the Wheels and Downland Living Museum. Denise. Fantastic place. It's lovely, isn't it? It's absolutely lovely. The sun was out when we first arrived, but of course it's gone in now. But um, this is very unique. It's a living museum because they have taken buildings and literally dismantled them piece by piece where they stood and then they have rebuilt them again here, brick by brick, slate by slate, tile by tile. For those people who have an interest in the TV programme, this is the site where they filmed or are filming the repair shop. And we'll have a little look later and see if we can catch just a little glimpse for you. We can't actually go in there and see it, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to get a shot for you. And you'll be able to see during the course of this episode where we're filming, where they film. And I hope you enjoy um, it. Because we couldn't agree on <laughs> the views that we wanted to paint, <laughs> we, we've landed up in this strange configuration. But it's fine, we'll cope and you'll manage, you'll be, you'll be cool with it. We've been sitting sketching, haven't we? We have. I've, I've done a little sketch. I think you've got your sketch drawn into I've your I've got sketchbook. my sketch drawn out. Denise is actually working on her, on the real piece now because you did a sketch to start with. I did a sketch there to start. There it is. This is a close-up of it. And, I mean, rather lovely, isn't it? Well, I used your Kurotaki pen yeah. that I was... So this is this lovely new pen here that I've been working with and this is um, something that's cropped up this year for Inktober for October. It's Inktober every month has its own strange arty um, yeah. affiliation. So, so May is Mermay and, and so on. So Inktober and it's rather beautiful. Tell us how you how it worked for you. I found it has an incredible fine point. So if you want to draw very fine lines, it gives you very. And what's very unusual fine. about the point though? It stays there. No. What is it? It's a brush. It's a brush. It's a brush. It's a brush. So although it's a fountain pen it's a brush and has tip. cartridges, it's a brush tip. Um, but the the ink blooms beautifully yeah. when you put water down. Yes. No, I, sound, I said that like I knew what I was talking about, didn't I? I had to ask you what the word was for the way that the, the ink went. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Put water on it and it just goes wash, doesn't it? Yeah. So you get to know what your paints do. It's really fantastic because, of course, you can use that in your paintings then quite deliberately, which yes. is fantastic. Yes. So I've, I've done my little sketch just looking at my, my tonal values using the ink. Should we show everybody the view that you're looking at? Yeah, why not? Here it is. Yeah, but I've drawn it all out. I've chosen a landscape format. Um, again, that narrowed my view down, which is what I. You like. haven't chosen a landscape format. Okay. What's I'm, your format? I've chosen a portrait format. Portrait format. format. Portrait format. <laughs> um, <laughs> what what are you? What are you doing here? Why what are you, are you doing? <laughs> I think that's going to become my catchphrase. <laughs> what are you doing? doing. Yes. Um, because I quite like the way it narrowed down the focus through the building. Yeah, and that gives you that tree yeah. up through the centre of the picture, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. I've gone the other way mm -hmm. because I've got um, a, a kind of wattle fence in front of me here. And because that's a, along and across the picture, I want to give that feeling yeah. and looking through the tree. So here's the picture that I'm going to paint. <laughs> oh, it's going to be wild as well. Have you seen that? I've actually got mixed media already. Yeah, already. Uh, oh, so how am I going to do this? I think I want to do this a little bit stylized today. I don't want to be too organized. Now, you see, I've got a fluffy thatch here. <laughs> I've got a fluffy thatch. The top of it's all sticking up on on the ridge of the uh, roof. On the are you talking about the building? Talking yeah, I'm talking about, about the thatch. Not my hair, no. Not my hair. 
Well, Not today. This pen is nice to work with. Isn't it lovely? Yes. I knew you'd like that. Now, the problem that <clears throat> you're going to have, and I'm already looking at here, is perspective, isn't it? And you've got rather a lot of it in the view that you're looking at. Yep. You could say that. Um, I think that I'm going to... Uh, I haven't got a technical term for this, so you just bear with me. I'm going to wonk this up. Do you know what I'm just going to make it all a bit... Make it a bit wonky. Yes. Yeah. Because otherwise I, I tend to try to get it right and get it wrong and it just looks wrong. So in that event I'm just going to um, wibble and wobble a bit. What was that phrase you used the other day? <laughs> when you put the paint down into your picture on a wet surface and it went whoosh. Used blossoming. That's the word. Yeah, blossoming paint, yes. Ink blossoms beautifully. Yes, yes. And that, that's something that will happen with certain pigments. Some of them are better than others to do that. And it's a very, very good idea to get to know which of your paints will do it. Yes. Because um, if you've got that information to hand, all of a sudden you can use that where you want to. Well, of course, building with flint here in Hampshire is traditional because we've got um, chalky, flinty soil, okay. and so that was available to hand. Yeah. And you'll see in the bricks in, and the, the uh, walls of some of our buildings, brick and flint to yeah. make it decorative. And then in the mortar are chips of flint. And they're the bits of flint that were napped away from the original okay. pieces. But just used for and they use them then for the decoration, which is Fantastic. a fabulous thing, yeah. Nice to see. It's nice as well, near where we are, there was somebody doing a, a flint faced garden wall recently. Yeah. yeah. And that was nice to see that it's still happening. Still being used, yes. Yeah, because it would be a shame, wouldn't it, to see the loss of these traditional. Um, methods yeah. yeah and it really is clever isn't it you think about dry stone walling um that you tend to see up in the lake district and in the north of the country and it's just a wonderful thing isn't it two gentlemen rolling a barrel let's hope it's full of wine and they're bringing in here <laughs> <laughs> or does it need to be gin Gin would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes. We've, we've been sampling different flavoured gins. Yes. Ooh, we tried one last night. But then we had another one, which was all right. <laughs> first one went down the sink, didn't it? Didn't like that. Second one then Yeah, went we won't down. mention any names. No. We didn't like the first one. So, yeah, I think I'm going tall. You're going to go tall and thin. So, yeah. that's so I'm going portrait to do, mode. Which is portrait mode, yes. Got a bigger piece of paper today. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'll we'll have to stand by because you know what happens when these starts to flick. Yes. I wore some of I it at Galston, I'm telling you, you have to watch that episode. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Don't you look to me like that? <laughs> I know you splashed me. <laughs> so, I was adding to I got over splash. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. I've got to work out now what I'm going to do with the rest of it. So I've got some of the most beautiful. What are you doing? It's my turn to ask you now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm choosing the bits and pieces that I like. And it's as simple as that, really. I'm just picking Are you and ends. almost going to collage elements into your painting? Yeah, because I have... Uh, if we look at the picture now, you can see that I have one tall tree right through the middle of it. I don't want that big tree. Too dominant. It's obliterating the prettier tree that's behind the lovely tree. shed that yes. I'm trying to do. Yes. And I'd like to get that one in because the contrast of those dark branches against the lighter mm. trees behind is pretty. Yes. 
that's my plan. And I love the splash of sunlight. The sunlight through there was beautiful. Through here, yeah. So yes. I, want, I definitely want to get that. I'm referring now to my sketch. There's a big hill, part of the South Downs, I presume. Yes, yeah, you're uh, looking at the South Downs. Yeah. where we are. And I'm going to put that in on my picture to give me my proportion, because I only really want the buildings to be no more than absolute maximum half, but I don't want to go exactly half, so... Okay. Take my half, come down a little bit. And then this, there's a huge tree in mine, which would be beautiful. And then we've had some really interesting skies this morning. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a bit in the bit, isn't it? Yeah. So I've got my hill going across. Yep. So all of my painting is going to be down here. Okay. And, then and the rest is going to be tree, sky, sky and the tree. And the tree yeah, that'd be out. lovely. Because that'll give you the height, won't it? Yes. The scale of it all. Yeah. And the glasses have to go on. Oh, I know. What we like. We like middle-aged people. Oh, That's no. what we like. <laughs> Oh no. I'm drawing very lightly because when I did this in my sketchbook I had to move things about six times because I drew up excited by a building and drew yep. it too big. Yeah, <laughs> we all do that. Yes, so everything just has to be in proportion and what you're doing is you're comparing is it taller than this, is it further left, yeah. is it further right, um, there's some fabulous there's some fabulous tile work going on and I'm not very good at being accurate I kind of fudge it a bit a lot of the time yeah but I think that's alright we're not painting photographs are we we're, no. you know it's um, because nature's not always the best uh, what's the word? Is it compositor? Doesn't always put things in the right composition or, or in a way, manner that we think is. Yeah. It's the buildings though that I'm not very good at being absolutely accurate on, so that's where I'm, I'm trying to kind of keep all these proportions. I see. I always say to students when they when they mention that, just be clever, everyone. Don't show people the original. Yes. You know, just just show them what you've done we've all got this horrible habit haven't we of saying oh but it's nothing like the original if you look at this photograph why do we do that yeah that's very true but anybody who knows this place will know which is the bigger building yeah because it's quite a famous place so I, I once had I did a painting when I lived in Bermuda I did a painting of the bank of Bermuda and I was just kind of fudging it and, and putting in suggestions yeah. of flaws on the building and what have you. And a lady came up to me afterwards and said, I really like this painting, but when did the Bank of Bermuda build two whole floors? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you do have to you be... You need to be right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that one was awkward. Okay. I'm not doing this sky, I'm doing a, I feel like, sky. It was oh, I agree, yeah, just do, do, the, do a sky that appeals to you. Well, the thing was, when we arrived, the skies were beautiful. We've got some lovely photographs of the skies in Downland and the South Downs and stuff. Um, but it's beginning to cloud over, so I just want to keep it... As you, are you going to do it as you remember it when we first yeah. got here kind of yeah, thing? It's, yeah, it's just... Yeah. Winding back time, just yeah. a little bit. Now I was saying earlier on, before we kind of kicked off, that I want to make mine a little bit airy fairy and almost not there kind of thing. Shadows, airy fairy. I know. Mystical, magical. No, I know. I, I don't want to be too precise with it, to be yeah. honest with you. So I, I want to make it all a bit kind of by bobbity wink and gentle and light so I'm just coming in and laying in a little bit of colour here mm -hmm. 
and I've mixed cerulean with French ultramarine. And I've got a whole layer of trees across the background here, so obviously there's a hillside that goes up behind what I'm seeing. And I've got to make the decision. Did you just see that? The, the flick? Did you see that? Watering the grass, behave yourself. <laughs> Duck! No. Duck now! That's so, goose, we saw goose. Oh, we yeah. saw geese, yes. We might hear them actually later because they're, they're still clattering away every, every now and again, aren't they? Yes. So I've got a problem of, of all the blue that's behind the trees, through the trees. Right. And then I've also got this issue with this mound of um, this hill or whatever it is that's going up behind. So I, I just want very little sky. Very, very little. I'm doing that manic thing where my paper is rapidly drying. So you've got to have a bit of a panic. Yeah. It's definitely a rapid before it dries moment. Are you using Bockingford again? Yes, £140 knot paper. I quite like doing this, pushing back just to get a little the wisps. wisp yeah. of cloud. But I can see the way that's drying now and I think I have to leave it alone. Because if you touch it, you land up with the cauliflowers, don't you? Yep. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Leave it alone, Denise. You can always come back in and work into it, but only when it's now dried off. I'm going to try this sap green that you've given me. This is a Jackson's. Professional sap green. Yeah. It says it's permanent too, so that's rather good, because sap green's one of those colours that could it's be a bit... quite fugitive and, and yeah. you know... When you look at the trees here, you can see that some of them are just starting to turn, aren't they? There's a blush on them. Yeah. Isn't that a good, yes, good word for it? Yes, that's nice, actually. So I, <clears throat> I'm looking at my trees, and I'm obviously thinking the leaves are darker. Yes. Um, it's the layering. The four they trees, shadow, so yeah. I've got to go to the background to make this really pairing up here on this hillside. So I think that's where I'm going to start. So where will you go now, do you think? Go, my <laughs> lovely. My um, I'm going to my hillside. Yep. Um, and I'm going to put. There's a layer of trees on the top of the, the South Downs, and then we've got a hill and a field, and that all tucks in behind the buildings that I've painted. So I generally work, as quite a lot of people do, from the distance forward. Forward. Start at the back and come forward. I've got a kind of theory about that though because I always say that if you paint it the way that your God made it, whoever your God is, the sky was there first and that arrived and then the planets okay. turned up so you've got the earth yeah. and then you had water and then the trees grew yes. and then we arrived and we were naked and then we put our, our hair grew and our, we put clothes on. And if you paint a picture forward like that, yeah. you find it really does work. It, it does work. So when I draw any of the people walking around, do I have to draw them naked before <laughs> I put their clothes on? <laughs> There's a thought. <laughs> they do say, don't they, if you feel intimidated, think about how that person would look naked. You know, imagine them naked. So, yeah, no, yeah, I don't always want to imagine somebody naked. Well done. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like how this is drying off. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? I do like these wisps. Yes, so do I. Might be trying that in future, Denise. I like that idea. Yes, you should create your crowd, clouds, and then you just kind of push push back a little yeah. bit in a few places. Mm. Looks lovely when you get that. Because English skies really are like that, aren't they? Well, I hope so. Thank you. Yes. I think they really are like that. Yes. Right. Beautiful. My palette and get on with my hillside. All right. In the picture. Oh, mixed media, lovely. Lovely. Talking wood, probably maybe time to get the 
The hummer sound. The hummer sound. We have a little, little bit of deliciousness. You could do that. I'm just going to put the hill side in and then once that dries off I shall have some hummus. That makes it sound incredibly middle class. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a hummus break. <laughs> I remember watching a TV uh, news report once, um, and I'm going back at many, many years, probably when the um, miners were on strike. And um, so that takes us back to the 70s, doesn't it? And there was a really well-known uh, TV clip on the news at that stage of a lady saying, uh, they were interviewing people and saying how they'd managed and, you know, getting hold of bits and pieces and feeding themselves and things, and she said, it was terrible, she said, we all had to eat pheasants. <laughs> and at that stage in my life, I'd never even seen a pheasant, let <laughs> alone eat right. one. How dreadful for the poor lad. <laughs> thought that was hilarious. Yes. So when you're working, do you mind having a bit of pencil line and pencil marks in, in your oh, work, or is that... Oh, it's all part of the, yeah. the process. I, I want it to be a painting. I don't want it to be a photograph. I want it a photograph. Just a you, photograph. Yeah, yeah. So I quite like the textures of the paint, the mist brush marks, the windows are gloriousness. Um, the odd colour for that, I don't mind. Yep. You know, it's all really part of the... Part of the process. Part of life's rich pattern, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just having a play here with um, some potter's green. And it's really, really looking quite nice. Okay. Yes, Look. it is. It's looking beautiful. Gives you a real misty, mm. misty feel to mm. it, doesn't it? I can hear the geese. The geese are having a moment. There was a chap earlier on, wasn't there, who hunkered down with two geese and patiently, patiently, patiently put his hand out and was trying to talk to them and they came right up to him and let, let him stroke them. Beautiful, wasn't it? Just, yeah. I was quite amazed, yeah. We've had fun with technicalities today, haven't we, Cheryl? We certainly have. We so need, We need a cameraman, don't we? we yeah. do, does anybody want to be our cameraman? We can't pay you. <laughs> But we'd be ever so grateful. <laughs> Not that grateful. <laughs> Who's married, darling? <laughs> Do you know, my husband might be quite glad to get rid of me for a while. <laughs> I think they both would. <laughs> Bless him. Okay, so I'm back in the studio and we just ran out of time on the day to finish it off so I need to finish this tree and I just want to put a few extra shadows in. So here we go, I've got my medium round brush and I'm just going to use it to layer up this uh, foliage for dry brushing. Just building up the texture on this tree. It was still very green, but there was just hints of sort of warmth coming from it as the colours were beginning to change. Just trying to keep the brush really flat to the picture. I 
And you just need to build this, these leaves up in layers and then it looks like it's got depth to it. I'm going to keep this area relatively clear because then that allows those trees at the background to be visible. And I need to build up on the trunks as well and the stems. And I'm just looking at where this layering is. It's behind this barn, but it's in front of this barn, so I can bring some leaves down over here. And that again further adds to the depth of the whole painting, just the layering and the positioning. And I'll push this one behind. This shadow is stronger in this barn. So I've put some into that corner and then I've just added water to spread it out. So I'm using some um, burnt sienna. And I'm going to put some more dark into it again just to tuck it in behind this other barn. Again, just putting some down and then using some water to spread it around. This is just kind of making it a bit messier. Okay, I'm going to work into the trunk here a little bit now. I'm going to use some. Um, Raw umber this time, just that little bit darker. The thing with trees is they're not tidy there. They're messy and unruly. So I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and raw umber in different quantities just to give me sort of a bluer colour or a greyer or a browner. try and build them up so that their trunks are thicker at the bottom and gradually fade. I've got them they're a bit too long and thin all the way up so I need to try and make these base ones a little thicker but not too much. It's just something that takes a bit of time and you just have to fill it in slowly. So I start with the lighter leaves and I'm gradually putting the, the layers slightly darker. I'm going to put a warmer colour in as well in a minute. I'm going to add a bit of warm, warm colours into this tree. So I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and a little bit of red into it just to kind of warm it up a little bit. I'm just going to put a few of these at the tips of the branches, it's just the start of the turn of the...
many of you will have heard of the repair shop. Some of you just by reputation, even if you haven't watched it. This is a BBC production. Um, it's produced by Ricochet and they use the old court barn at the Weald and Downland Museum. And it's really become quite a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, talking to a friend recently out in New Zealand, they watch it out there. How about that? It started in 2017 and became so popular on BBC Two that they moved it to BBC One. And it's a program where Britain's most skilled artisans and craftspeople rescue and resurrect items that owners thought originally were beyond help. And anyone can apply to have their heirlooms seen and repaired. And you just apply via the BBC website. Owners don't pay for the repairs. This is all down to the goodwill of the BBC. But we were very lucky when we visited. I mean, the conservators travel from across the UK for the filming. And when we were there at the museum, they weren't actually filming, which means that they throw the doors open and we could stand there and we could have a jolly good look and a nosy and a squiz around the workshop. It's the tidiest place I've ever seen. The way it's kept and the organisation is phenomenal. So they do the repairs here, but they also use some of the outbuildings as well, depending on what needs to be done. Um, there, we spoke to a chappie called Mark and he works for Ricochet and he was there to sort of um, look after it whilst we were all viewing. And he was saying that they're planning now on the next lot of filming on 30 episodes and they're going to use a hundred plus items so these artisans will be repairing a hundred plus items just think of that I mean obviously some of them won't be used for the show that's fair enough they might not be as exciting or as interesting I mean some of them surely can't be repaired they might be beyond it but what a time we had just standing there in awe, looking at this place where these wonderful people work. And let's be totally honest about this. They're heroes. When you see the work that they do, it is just stunning. I hope you're enjoying these images. I'm so excited to see this, Denise. I can't believe we're here. Fab! Oh, wow. It's beautifully organised, isn't it? Look at my studio, look this organised. It's really nice to be able to see it all. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad you had a good day. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Whether this is open or not, but we're Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll get that close where that white side is. So, if they're not So, weekends,
Denise. Here we are outside of Whitaker's Cottage. Yes. And we're at the Wheels and Downland Museum. We've had the most wonderful day. The weather has been it. amazing. It's been fabulous. We've had a lovely time. We've painted. We've seen horses. We've seen geese. We've seen men with barrels. Men with barrels and the repair shop. And we've oh, seen the repair shop. Yeah, we've that had. That was a, so exciting. We've had a lovely time. I can't so, tell you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one where you can dip into our conversation. Bye. Bye. This pen you've lent me, which is rather lovely, when you unpack and put all your stuff away after I've gone home, Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> if, it's miss if it's missing. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, dear, I should get the cats to check out your luggage before you leave. <laughs> I'll send socks in. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, her cat is called Socks, so, so don't just assume that she's just going to throw socks at me. <laughs> You all know socks, don't you? Oh, we had a hilarious weekend last weekend. We were up visiting relatives and um, talking about the garden. And her uh, lads had their lady friends um, to stay for the afternoon. And I was talking to my cousin and she was mentioning uh, jobs that she needed to do in the garden. And was saying that she'd got a really rather large bush and it needed trimming. <laughs> and one of the lady friends absolutely nearly fell off her chair. Oops. She didn't think that old people like us would talk about things like that. You've got to keep the she bush in order. She nearly choked. Absolutely. <laughs> So you know I lend you my my box. Yes. What are you going to say? You haven't got enough now. I have no idea where the box is. I've got it here. I'm hiding it. Look. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> you lend, you, lend your friend a water oh, no. bottle and she it's hides terrible. it from it's terrible. you. Terrible. Terrible. Oh, these people. This is the problem with coming out things like this. You don't know where anything is. You don't know where you put it. Oh dear. Never mind, everybody.